Welcome to another ESU 8 Wednesday webinar. This week I'm happy to share with you the updates to the new Apple Classroom app. While Apple Classroom was originally released over a year ago, it was version 1. And starting this fall with version 2.0, we're able to take advantage of its features even without a developed management system or MDM for our iPad devices in our classroom. There are some preliminary requirements, including that our iPads need to be updated um, to one of the latest operating systems. They need to be able to be running at least iOS 10.3 or newer, and they need to have Bluetooth enabled and wireless capabilities on um, that allow peer-to-peer -peer sharing. But really, that's it. You just go to the App Store, search for the Apple Classroom app, and install it for free on your teacher iPad. Um, you only need it on the teacher device and we'll go ahead and, and launch it here now on the bottom right hand corner of my screen and get you started. The first time you launch Apple Classroom you will need to add in your teacher information and then you can create new classes at any time with the plus button. Here I already have an ESU8 Apple Classroom classroom started and I'll just click the add button to add students. You'll notice there's a code that displays, much like when you start a Kahoot quiz or something else that students would need to connect to it from. And we'll switch over to the student view on the iPad now to watch how that looks on their end. All right, so here I am on a student device, and this is actually a very clean um, iPad. It actually doesn't have very many apps on it at all, and you'll notice that it doesn't have that Apple Classroom app on it installed as of yet. So we don't need it. We're just gonna go into our settings. Um, one of the settings here on this device now is underneath of these main menu of settings, you have this section for Apple Classroom. Um, if you have it set to join classes automatically, you'll see those invitations that appear at the top, just like this one does in blue, add ESU8's Apple Classroom. Or we could um, search for additional classes or join them manually um, down below. Since we're being invited right now to this classroom, I'll go ahead and tap on it, and then I'm prompted to enter that four-digit code that appeared on my teacher device. Um, once a student has done this one time, they will remain in that classroom. So you really only have to connect the student devices once. I mean, you can use it over and over again. So this is really helpful for creating classes on the fly. Um, it's also nice if you were to um, want to separate and maybe you taught um, a different group of students um, for um, science as you did math and you could actually create separate classrooms and, and have them join those and then start and end those classes when you want to use them with those students. Um, one important thing to notice is that because I'm not um, managing these or managing the, the classes with an MDM is that students do have the power, um, kind of unfortunately, to um, have the teacher um, iPad ask them if it's okay if they lock them into an app or some of the restrictions that we want to be able to use. If I were setting these up for younger students the first time, I would switch these oops, to always allow them to lock and always allow them to airplay and view screen. That way the, the students won't see that message that says, is it okay if the teacher controls your iPad? Is it okay if the teacher uh, projects your screen or, or views your screen? Um, now, students that are a little bit older and or that might um, be pick, picking around inside of their settings can change that, um, but like I said, most students won't even know that it's there, and if you turn that on for them the first time, then it should be set for you and ready to go for the future. So now that we've got that set, we're going to switch back over to the teacher device and take it from there. All right, so you can see in my um, Apple Teacher app on my teacher iPad, I'm still in that Add Students screen, and I do have one here, Katie, who was asked to join, and so I'm gonna go ahead and add her now. Um, 
by the way, the offline one is a different iPad, and um, obviously Tina has joined this class before, but currently she's offline. And they will show offline, your students will, if they are out of Bluetooth range. So this requires proximity, and um, it will not, the, the settings, whether you're controlling uh, an iPad or locking them down, it will only take place when they're in your close proximity and in range of Bluetooth. If the student were to walk to a different classroom and you forgot to unlock their iPad, for example, it would not um, be in effect when they leave your proximity. Um, likewise, if a student swipes up from their command center at any time and happens to turn that Bluetooth off, well, that would be a problem because then Apple Classroom would no longer be able to um, see and control that student device. So um, some people um, recommend that if you have the ability to turn, um, to, to make sure that Bluetooth remains on and Wi-Fi remains on on student devices and take that power away from them, that um, you can avoid any possible complications with that. Again, if we just uh, are vigilant, and usually the first thing that would happen if you can't connect to a student device is that Bluetooth got accidentally switched off. So here we are in the Apple Classroom app and our main navigation bar gives me basically all the controls I need across the top. I've already added students with this first button here and the second button is to open an app. So we'll go ahead and do that one. Um, now, right now I'm opening the app for all three students even though only one is connected. Um, if I switch off of that, you'll notice that I do have um, the, the capabilities of doing it just to that one device. Here we go, the one iPad that I'm actually um, connecting with. So the two students who maybe aren't present today or who have walked out of Bluetooth range, I don't even have to mess with sending the commands there and not being able to find them. Let's just do our practice today with the one device that's currently connected to this classroom. So again, I'm going to open an app. And I can choose from any app on my device However, it does not tell me what apps are on the student device, um, and it does need to be on the student device in order for Apple Classroom to open it, obviously. Um, like I told you earlier, that device is pretty pretty clean, pretty, doesn't have very many apps, so I'm going to have to stick with one of the basic Apple apps in order to demonstrate this feature, and we'll find in here um, one of the Apple apps. There's Keynote, I can see it. There we go. And before I tap the Keynote app, um, notice down across the bottom of the screen is the slider to turn on to lock them in that app after opening. Sometimes you just want to open it for a student and that's fine, but to me the real power is being able to keep them in that app until you're ready for them to go to use something else. Um, and so I wish that that slider would be actually at the top of this menu, but it's not, so you need to remember to slide that on first if you do want to lock them in the app. And now I'll tap on the Keynote app, and you'll notice on my um, screen here on my Apple Classroom screen that it shows that Katie's iPad now is in the Keynote app. And I can actually tap on Katie's little icon here and view her screen full screen to see more specifically what she's doing in Keynote. Now as I manipulate that app, and it is about a half second delay, it's not an instantaneous um, viewing of student screens, but it's not too delayed at all, um, but I can see as the students are interacting with the app on their screen um, and I can watch that in pretty close to real time. Now if I tap done and the student continues to work, um, I'm going to still see and still monitor that Katie's in Keynote, um, but watch what happens if I go to view screen again here and I'm going to do a test Keynote slide here. Um, and then I decide, oh, I've had enough of this. I'm going to go visit another app. And I, on my student device, try to press the home button. And you won't notice anything happen, and that's because nothing does. Students are truly locked in that app, and if they try to navigate out in any way, they are not able to. So that's pretty awesome to be able to do that, especially for young learners. Um, maybe we can lock them in an app in a, in a station or in a rotation or in a small group and um, essentially allow for a little bit more supervised use of the iPads. If we're, we're, we're finished with that um, locking them in Keynote, then I can hit the unlock button. 
I could do that from this small menu or I could do it back out on my main menu. Um, and of course I could do that with all iPads or just the one group that I'm currently focused on using the lock button at the top. This would do the same thing. And um, it allows me to um, lock and unlock pretty easily. By the way, if I don't worry about locking them in a certain app and I just want to get a student's attention, let's say I just want them to um, stop what they're doing, no matter what they're working on, and give me their eyes. That lock button in the main menu allows me then to do just that. And if we view um, the student screen right now, I'll just go to view screen, you can see what they see is the padlock. And I can ask for their eyes and their attention and then go back and unlock that screen when I'm ready for them to go back to work. And you'll notice that they then go back to that app and it just shows that they're still working in Keynote. Um, and now I'm gonna hit the home button and you can see that Katie's in the home screen. All right, so pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Doesn't take a lot of, of, of know-how to um, send an app to students and lock them in that app or just lock their screen and get their attention. Let's talk next about navigating and being able to send them to a website. Um, that's our third button up here in our main navigation bar, our main toolbar. Again, I'm gonna apply this command just to um, the one student device that I have selected in the subgroup here. And unlike an app, unfortunately, you cannot lock students in a website. Um, you can take them to a website, but they can use the, the home button and they can navigate away from that website. So maybe um, that's at least a start. We can also send them to a particular book title or a place in an iTunes U course. But for most of us, the majority of us will utilize the feature with a website. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and find a website from our um, Safari bookmarks. And you can make these bookmarks on your Mac laptop or on your iPad um, and just save them so you know you're gonna use them later on. Let's go to internet safety here and let's send them to a staying safe online song on YouTube. And we just tap that and you'll notice instantly that one iPad has been navigated. Let's view that student screen there and, and verify that indeed the student device is visiting the YouTube internet safety song, and it is. It's just a little loading a little bit slowly here. And also another thing that's nice to know that as soon as that, that video starts playing, um, you can also, if the students have forgotten to mute their devices, you can control the audio by muting those devices as well. Um, it does just mute it temporarily and they still have the volume controls on the side of their iPad to turn that volume back up but it might be a good reminder to plug in those headphones or those earbuds and continue to watch it without disturbing the rest of the class. So here I've taken them to a website um, by putting it into a bookmark. There's also um, in iOS 11 if, if all of your devices are updated that far um, there's a a way to drag and drop websites and navigate to them through Apple Classroom by just dropping the URL on top of the button. Um, but the traditional way here is to, again, use that navigate button and have something saved ahead of time in your bookmarks. So we've taken care of the lock button, which is the fourth button, and we also just briefly mentioned the mute button. So now let's take a look at screens, and this is really no different than um, earlier when we were looking at the student screen full screen, except this gives us the whole class at one time. And you'll notice that when I was not in that screen view, it still said the name of the app, but when I'm in the screens view, it actually shows me a thumbnail of each student's screen. You can imagine my class of 20 or 25 devices and all of their screens are showing at once. Um, this is really um, ideal in my mind for projecting onto a wall, not necessarily to sit and monitor screens the entire time you're teaching, but just to keep kids a little bit more accountable um, even amongst their peers. So they're able to, um, at a quick glance, check on each other and make sure they're all on task. Or maybe even if they're working out a problem, a math problem, or um, doing a drawing of, of, a, of a concept in a drawing app, you can easily see all the students' ideas on one screen um, in little tiny thumbnails. And then each one that you want to show in a little more detail, you could bring up 
larger screen with the View Screen button. So the thumbnails view of the screens is, is handy for, for many things, and you can toggle back and forth between those two views pretty easily. And finally, our last button is a group button, and this one allows me to make a new subgroup. And this might be my reading group, maybe I want a group of iPads that are just for the girls in the class, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, maybe I want a group of one, and one student's going to get some different commands and some different controls than the rest of the class. When I add the group, I can name it whatever I want, and then I add the devices. In this case, I only have one, but I'm going to add that one to my reading group. And then I'll tap Done in the top right. And now I can still go back and forth between my other groups, my all, and then that new group that I created. I can edit that group and add more devices to it. I can also delete it entirely by pressing and holding on the icon for that group and then tapping the remove um, pop-up message that appeared there. So there you have it. The last and final feature that I want to show with show you with Apple Classroom 2.1 is the ability to share files, um, both via myself, my teacher iPad, to my students, and from my students back to my classroom. So to do that, I'm going to first show you how a student might share something with you. And so we'll go back over to the student iPad. So back on our student's device, you can see how easy it is for them to share things with you um, as far as files and attachments and evidences of learning. I'm going to ask my student here on this iPad to visit the Notes app and start a new note if there isn't already a space for them to do so. When they get their cursor on that new note, then they can um, bring up their keyboard. And in the top right hand corner of the keyboard, if your app is updated enough, you'll notice the little marker icon that allows students to mark up the note or draw. Um, I'm just gonna ask them to work out the problem that I've mentioned, which is finding the area of this triangle. And this triangle might be on the board and we're gonna say that the base is four, and the height is six. And when we show our work here, we know that our, our um, formula is one half base times height. And so I can work that out and obviously show all the great thinking that is happening for this student, even without being over there um, individually. So once the student gets the answer, they've got their note, and now they're just gonna use the share arrow. And they wanna send this to me. So that share arrow here um, comes up with typically the airdrop settings. This is the cool feature. The airdrop doesn't even have to be turned on and always automatically, you'll see the option to share back to that Apple Classroom of which the student device is connected to. So I can just tap on the name of my teacher, Mrs. Morrow, in ESU8's Apple Classroom, and I have just sent her my work. Let's go check it out on the teacher device now. If you look real closely at the toolbar across the top, you'll notice we now have a new button. This only becomes available when we've shared a file with our students or our students have shared a file with us, and it's called sharing. It has a little one icon to alert us that there is a new document, and you can see here that student Katie has shared a notes document. I can tap on it and view that note just as Katie sent it. You can see the work from the student device there. Had she continued on, you would be able to see even more. Um, that's pretty awesome and pretty easy to collect things from all of your students. If any of you have used AirDrop in the past, it's, it's handy. However, it's a one-to-one -one experience. So I can only have students handing in one thing at a time to me. And um, with a classroom full of iPads that have AirDrop turned on, it's, it's very easy to get confused. Which ones have I received from and which ones haven't I and which ones um, accepted my file and which ones didn't. So this is a um, all at once type of experience, which is handy. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that when we go to the report at the end, but for now let's talk about how the teacher can send out a document to the students. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to, and, and obviously I could go to that share arrow on my teacher device just like I did on the student device, um, but I want to show you another way you can share files with the newest version um, using drag and drop. 
So to do that, I'm gonna put my iPad into split view. So I'm gonna pull up my dock by swiping my finger from the bottom up, and I get my open apps, just like I would on a dock on a Mac. I'm going to share this screen, both with Apple Classroom and with Photos. So I'm gonna take the Photos app, drag it and drop it on the right hand side so that they can share the screen and I can slide this divider over and share it more or less if I want to view um, one of those apps larger or smaller but this is plenty I can navigate through all of my camera roll here and I can find the photo that I want to share which is happens to be a PDF um, that I want my students to complete it's it's just a way to do a digital worksheet honestly I'm gonna take this picture of this internet safety PDF and drag it and drop it right on top of my student device, or I could put it on top of my all. I'm just gonna go right on top of my one student device um, for right now and send it to Katie. And now Katie can do whatever she wants with that PDF handout. She could accept it and um, read it. She could definitely mark it up. We'll take a look at her device here as we view her screen. I can see that she's received the document and we'll just view her screen here so we can see what she sees. It opened up in photos. She's going to hit continue here and advance to the next screen. And just by clicking in the top right corner of her photos menu, she can edit that PDF using the markup tools in photos. To gain back the rest of my screen here, I'm just going to swipe to the right to get rid of my split view and bring up that student device screen full screen. Here the student can, just like any image in photos, they can annotate it or mark it up. They'll just tap the edit button, they'll find the markup three little dots in the bottom of the menu, and then use the markup marker icon. Tap that. Now I have those traditional drawing tools that we've seen even in notes, we now see them in the photos on um, any, any device, and they're able to use those tools to mark up on top of the PDF that I just sent them. Show their work, mark their answers. They could save it back um, and send it back to me, or I could just watch the students doing it live by viewing their screens in the Apple Classroom app. So this ability to share documents and files with my students back and forth is by far the most powerful feature of Apple Classroom really facilitates, even though it's not a full-fledged LMS, it really facilitates a lot of great interaction in my classroom. One final feature of the new Apple Classroom 2.1 app only shows when you hit the End Class button in the top left-hand corner, and this is a class summary report. In it, you can see all the apps that were used during this class session, any items that were shared, and what individual students actually did on their iPad whether you were viewing their screens or not. So here we can tap on an individual student and see which app she used when. Um, we can use this to just kind of review what, um, if they used their time well, what they were supposed to be doing. Um, for upper elementary students, this would be a great reminder of um, allowing them to have some freedom and, and make some choices and yet still be productive students in the classroom. This is a great report that you can pull up at the end of each class. It is gone the next time you start the class, so you might consider um, saving it uh, by screenshotting it or printing it off, or uh, maybe just using it as a spot check from time to time. Um, but that is, of course, a new feature that you might want to take advantage of. So there you have it, the free Apple Classroom app. If you haven't gotten enough confidence by watching this Wednesday webinar to try it out on your own, um, feel free to contact me or anyone here at ESU8 and we can come out and be that extra set of hands the first time you try it. I'm sure you'll find that it'll make your teaching and learning even more productive um, within your iPad classroom and hopefully you'll find great uses to share with all of us here at ESU8 and in the whole entire learning community. Thanks so much for listening and have great happy learning with Apple Classroom.